I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I'm so delighted today to introduce to you Eric Briggs. We met Emily, his wife, last time, and uh, she did a good job. She did. She's, and we could have gone on forever. I'm, I'm sure people, I get that every once in a while. People will say, boy, you should have talked more with that person and give them more time. But I'm quite fond of her, yes. Yeah, I'll bet you are. She's a sweetie. So, Eric, uh, as we usually do, where were you born and raised and all, all that? I, I grew up in American Fark, Utah. In American Fark, yeah. Uh, that's right. <laughs> that's where you went to school and everything? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, my, my father was a convert uh, to the church. He's, he was um, originally from um, Minnesota, back east. Oh, but uh, yeah. my mom is, she was six maybe seven generation Mormon, wow. probably six. Uh, and again, um, like Emily was saying, we, we can drop names with the best. Um, <laughs> we, we've got a good, good pedigree yeah. and they, my ancestors have, their names have been spoken over the pulpit and general conference. And Yours too, huh? Yeah, so you... That's fantastic. So are you... <laughs> so they were very active. Your your parents. Yeah, yeah. The family. joke is, we were so Mormon. We were we we were Shiite Mormon. <laughs> oh, that's very that, active. I'll be darn. Uh, brothers and sisters, how many do you have? Uh, I'm number seven of eight kids. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, so you go to church, and I mean, you become deacon and teacher and yep, all that did, stuff. Yeah, did all the stuff and the things. Uh, I loved seminary. Like, I had a passion for seminary. You did. Like, I, that's my day would be to, it, it, the highlight of my day would be to go to seminary and answer all the questions right before the other kids. <laughs> so I was a, I was a seminary nerd. Oh, yeah. be darn. <laughs> totally. You're kind of, uh, that's, that's funny. And so uh, you graduate seminary, graduate mm -hmm. high school. What happens after that? Uh, I went to uh, the Orem Institute and kind of oh, did, did the you? same thing there. Yeah. Loved everything about the church I wanted to, to learn. History, doctrine, everything. I just absorbed. feel like you had a good testimony of Joseph Smith. And yeah, oh the yeah. Book of Mormon. And, and, and I'll do you one better. In my family, um, at our like reunions, we have some... We had some unsavory apostates that I was related oh, to, and so, and they were very articulate and smart. So when you went to a family reunion, um, you better know your stuff. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you'd get schooled pretty hard. So I, I knew the arguments for and against. I was, I was pretty well versed in all of the, uh, the controversy really? of the doctrine, the the That's... whole priesthood issue and polygamy, and I mean those were just staples, and you just knew, you had to know your stuff and I'm, I loved, I'm really impressed with that. I, I loved arguing, you so, know, very... So you knew about polyandry? Sure. And, yeah, yeah. In, in you, fact, you really did. the whole polygamy with Joseph Smith, it wasn't a sore spot with me because um, my ancestor is Amanda Barnes and she was posthumously sealed by Brigham Young to Joseph Smith. So for me, for my family, it was a source of pride. We were like, yeah, that's our boy. We're, <laughs> we're in. <laughs> Woo! Well, I guess why I'm so impressed is that we... You know, I was so active. I was a seminary graduate and all that kind of stuff. But I never knew any of these controversial things. Where did you get started with no, even knowing about them? Well, that was, From the reunion? Yeah, probably. Because... Uh, you, um, you'd go talk to your apostate family? Yeah, and oh, by the way, those, my apostate cousins are Nibblies. And so you have to whoa. understand we're talking that level of type stuff, apologetics. Huh? You, you, you needed to know your stuff. And, and and my parents went to I don't know if you remember the old know your religion oh sure courses yeah. that was something they would go to and participate in and come home and we were expected to you know know a lot of that and 
um, heavily involved in Education Week. As soon as I was old enough, my sister would take me to Education Week, and oh we would hit the, the circuit and just couldn't get enough. Absolutely loved it. Now, you went on a mission. Yeah, so I, go? I, I got my mission call. I received it to uh, Portugal, Porto, Portugal. Um, for whatever reason, I, I, I couldn't, my, I had to wait for my visa. That happens sometimes. Yeah. yeah, and so it was about a six month delay. So a quarter of my mission, they're like, let's send him to California, the Riverside mission, Spanish speaking, it's close enough to Portuguese, oh. and it wasn't. <laughs> so the majority of my time in California was knocking doors in um, Murrieta, Temecula, California, where the, the, the Calvary Chapel has their college. I thought that California was just um, full of atheist surfers, <laughs> and boy, was I surprised. Dudes, huh? uh, yeah, I was, I'm knocking doors, and everyone wanted to engage. So I, I, I had thousands and thousands of conversations. And with your background, yeah. you were able to present the church. And I was more than happy to, to go toe engage. to toe with them. And yeah, stuff. and I, I, I reveled in it. It was fun for me. Did you learn anything there that? ever you always had answers or did you question I all? always had answers that were sufficient for me sure um, what I learned was that Christians are very sure of themselves and not very many of them are effective in piercing the heart of a young Mormon missionary it was less effective and now I look back on it and and, and I think what could I have what could I tell the Christians to do to be more effectively that's an interesting perspective. You know, witness to a, to a Mormon missionary. Because now you're on that other side. Yeah. And what would you say to that young missionary? Yeah, and there was, there was a lot of finger pointing and you're going to hell kind of stuff. And, and, and I would think, well, first of all, you're not qualified to do that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the Lord's job. And so, uh, <laughs> and I think a lot of it fed into that, um, that, uh, that mentality you have as, as a Mormon of I'm being persecuted. And it, oh, it, sure. it must be for the truth. But yeah. you know, I'll take my lumps because I'm yeah. I'm a champion. So so you actually became an apologist of sorts. What yeah. did you do with that? Uh, I mean, just had a good you... time. I lo yeah. I loved to yeah. argue religion, and 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 it was fun to at least get them to second guess their position. And get a I, Christian to second guess. Yeah, absolutely. Think, and and, yeah. and one of the common things was, um, you know, how how do you think I'm not a Christian? You know, why do you, what gives you the right to say if I am or not? Whether a Mormon's a Christian or not, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. And how long did this go on? That was the six oh, months you probably in California. Probably. Oh, okay. And then I went to Portugal and it was all Catholicism after that. So <laughs> you learned more about it. It wasn't as fun, but. Yeah. So little would I know that that would come back to bite me. I'd have to face those. Those have evangelical you ever, Christians. You've never again. gone back and talked to any of them. No, but a lot of them have moved up here and they go to church where I go to church. And oh, so that's fun. That's, that's kind of fun for me. That's to, awesome. It serves me right that, yeah. that here I am now. I never in my wildest dreams would have thought I would be yeah. an evangelical Christian. But Yeah, I don't I don't think we we really don't have a lot of I mean, I don't want to say it quite this way, but we don't have a lot of regard for Christians. Yeah. And they don't they I mean, we don't. Uh, we just don't feel like they have anything to offer. We sure. we have the gospel plus all this other stuff. I think a, a, another deterrent for us uh, fr from taking them seriously was as Mormons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the time, um, my missionary companions and I, we would laugh. We called it the, the Church of Free Beer and Pizza <laughs> because it seemed like there was no consequence for. All, all of the free grace that they would espouse. Oh, we're saved by grace, so we can do whatever we want, and we're good because we're in with the guy. And we're just like, how, how can you be so arrogant that you won't take consequence? You know, you won't yeah. accept the responsibility of your sin. Looking back now, and I'm sure they had a message to share. Yeah. And yeah. this is what you're saying: How yes. could we penetrate that wall that we Mormon missionaries would have? Right. But uh, do you think you ever, where they were presenting, <laughs> I know this is such an interesting thing to have you now on the other side. Yes. But what do you, um, do you think they said things that you should have picked up on? Yeah, yeah there were a couple, <laughs> um, there were a couple instances where they got through and they pierced my heart and it, it forever, it stuck. Yeah. Um, I remember one woman in particular said, why should I read your Book of Mormon when I myself don't read the Bible? 
which is my, which I should be reading. And yeah. she was admitting her faults that yeah. she should take responsibility as a Christian to, you know, I don't have time to even read my own book. Why would I read yours? And I, I, I couldn't argue with that. I was like, yeah. And I, all I could do is say I'd pray for her and encourage her to read her Bible. What did you think about Jesus at this point as a Mormon? Well, I, I my dad ran a Boy Scout camp up in the High Uinta Mountains. So in the summertime, we left the valley and we lived in a teepee. I tell people that and they think we're some kind of hippies, but we were Boy Scouts. Yeah. Growing up at Boy Scout camp and at night we didn't have TV. My mom would read to us Bible stories. So I grew up with a deep love and an appreciation for the Bible. Yeah. Well, and then it was it was on my mission, you know, you you read the cover page that that Mormon wrote with his own hand <laughs> that says that the purpose of the Book of Mormon is the convincing of the Jew and the Gentile that Jesus Christ yes, the, is the eternal God. Mm -hmm. And so I always, I took that very seriously because if the Book of Mormon says that Jesus Christ is the eternal God, uh, it must be so. And so I always knew that Jesus was Jehovah God of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. I It was kind of hard reconciling that with the you know, the two personages, Elohim and, and Jehovah, but I yeah. knew that Jehovah was, that, Jesus, was yeah. that was our God, and we were to yeah. take him seriously. He was our elder brother. Yeah, I, I, I kind of reconciled that, like, you, you, when you took the sacrament, you were adopted into his family as his, his, his child, you know, yeah. so he then became, the son became the father, and there's some passages in the Book of Mormon that kind of helped with that, but... Uh, I, I I always believed in the God of the Old Testament, Jehovah, and I knew that that was Jesus, and I knew that I wanted to be devoted to him. So it was the Book of Mormon that got me excited to learn about Jesus. When I got home from my mission, um, I did everything I could to be accepted into the BYU Jerusalem program. Oh. And I finally got accepted, and uh, the first day I'm, I'm in class in Jerusalem, my oh, BYU wow. professor plunks this book down on our desk and this is so this is my so the B, this is from BYU this is my BYU issued NIV study Bible and we were scandalized because you can see it's held together with duct tape I've, it's yeah. been used yeah a I bit. can see that it's been used very soft and flexible the way but there's a <laughs> there's a there's a cross on there so we were like as Mormons we were mortified and like how we this is blasphemy and and I remember he he said something to the effect of if you want to understand the the Bible you need to read it in your own language and how many of you speak you know old King James English and okay you got us there buddy That's so fascinating and everything that was controversial about the Bible like everything we went at it in in detail like all the little minutiae during this time in Jerusalem yeah and I thought how that long was, was weird. that that was uh, about six months or so wow okay yeah and it was a wonderful experience at first I was thinking why is this guy hitting all these controversial topics yeah hindsight being 2020 I, I realized what he was doing he was trying to inoculate us to what we call today the higher criticism of the bible yeah and he did it very effectively because i gained a deep appreciation for the the transmission of the translation process how we can depend on it how it's historically reliable there's evidence oh my goodness and in and i think that's come back to kind of backfire on me because when I did start to question my Mormon faith, I turned to the Bible, um, With knowing a greater it was, trust of it. It was reliable. I yeah. knew it was good. Oh, that's so. funny. Were you going to BYU then? I no, don't know no, the, no. I don't know I was, the details of then getting into that. Program. I was at the Utah Valley, um, okay. and so I was one of a few students who got accepted into the BYU program. I see. Um, I, I later got into BYU, but I ended up being a BYU dropout. It, it wasn't for me. And I remember saying that walking around on BYU campus and being so alarmed at how the comparison between the culture at BYU and the Pharisaic culture of Jerusalem at the time of Jesus and thinking, have these people even read the New Testament? <laughs> Do they know what it says here? <laughs> and I'm like, there was such hypocrisy and it was so frustrating. And I remember thinking, if I want to keep my faith as a Mormon, I need to leave here. So I left. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm a BYU dropout. I'm be done. very proud of that. <laughs> well, so then, I mean, you, you get married. Yeah. And so tell us what uh, life holds for you. I mean, are you still apolo being an apologetic, I guess? Um, as, yeah. Um, in a formal way, or are you more informal in the apologetic? At first, it was, I, I, I had a couple of these professors took me under, my, under their wing. 
Uh, I really wanted to become, you know, in a mentor capacity, I wanted to be an apologist to defend the Mormon faith. I considered myself very good at it. I knew the stuff. I knew the controversies. Um, and I, I just enjoyed engaging people who, who wanted to battle the faith. So did you go to like farms or fairs? Yeah, yeah, I was, I, I participated in those things when they offered like lecture series, I, I would be involved, I mm -hmm. paid attention when the internet showed up and there was all kinds of neat stuff, I was yeah. digging in right deep and on top of it, huh? I wanted to be on the cutting edge of all of the, <laughs> the nitty gritty. So. so what happens to you? Okay, so, uh, <laughs> well, I went through a divorce Okay. Um, I, again, I didn't see that coming, but uh, it, it kind of it, it threw me for a loop. Um, I met Emily uh, that you spoke with last time, yeah. and um, we started to blend a family. And I took my responsibility as the, the, the shepherd, the, the priesthood holder of this family very seriously. I, yeah. um, in Deuteronomy, it talks about the responsibility of parents to teach their children the Word of God. And I took that very seriously in a Mormon context. And so um, I devoted myself to preparing really uh, well thought out family home evening lessons and scripture study. We yeah, would she read. You said you even bought the, or got a replica of the yeah, tabernacle. Yeah. Anything to make it more fun for the kids and explain yeah. to them. And, and, and since I had lived in Jerusalem, it, it makes, makes these stories come to life. It's yeah. more real instead of a fairy tale far, sure. far long ago. Um, and so, uh, I don't, it, it, it was a series of things. It was probably a, a triple pronged approach. God hit me in several different directions <laughs> with a couple things I had to deal with. Yeah. Um, there was some new controversies within the church that I was trying to, you know, and, 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 and I didn't, um, I didn't hesitate in trying to learn all of the details of what was going on. So I always knew the issues, like when South Park played the, the rock and the hat episode of their of their show yeah. and that brought up a lot of controversy and I had some friends leave the church and I'm like you left the church over a South Park episode that's ridiculous there's I've got some good reasons you should leave that's not <laughs> one of them um had you and you were aware of that I guess yeah that, yeah the, hat, the stone in the hat, or yeah. Sierra stone yeah and Amazing. uh I, the thing is as we studied the bible um we, I kind of got sick of teaching the kids the Book of Mormon. And it was like, if the Book of Mormon is another testament of Jesus Christ, why don't we go to the testament of Jesus Christ, the original, <laughs> and see what Jesus actually taught? And as a, as a critical thinker, you're supposed to go to the source document and let it speak for itself. So like if you want to do a, a, an authentic study of the Word of Wisdom, you go to DNC 89. And yeah, you read the word read of wisdom. What it says. This is what God supposedly yeah. said to Joseph Smith. Maybe we should take it seriously. So that's how that's how um, I was teaching my children. I was trying to give them that same inoculation. I knew that they were going to run into problems, and you wanted them to be prepared. And, and let's yeah. not hide the issues. Let's yeah. address them honestly. And if the church is true, it's it can be easily defended. And I honestly believe that. And as I learned more, and as the Bible made plain to me that it was not teaching the same thing it's a different gospel that I had been taught as a kid and that I did not see that coming that hit me like a freight train and it's like you couldn't go two pages without tripping over something that was diametrically opposed to Mormon theology were you af not afraid but were you surprised you were surprised then at this yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah what how did you deal with that initially I mean would you you try to cling on to it more carefully or? So I was meeting with an evangelical pastor um, because I wanted to hear his take on some of these things. Because I believe that one of the problems, we were studying the book of Revelation and in the first couple of chapters of the book of Revelation uh, is the letter to the seven churches. Sure. And the particular letter, the part that's addressed to Ephesus, it seemed like Ephesus was giving up on their first love, which is supposed to be the Lord. Um, that rang true to me with what was going on with a lot of Mormons. They would come up against something that was difficult and realize that they had been, you know, they felt lied to or they felt deceived. Yeah. And so they were disenchanted with the church. And so they would throw, you know, all things holy, all things God and scripture out. out. They throw the baby out with the bathwater. Right. And I was trying to prepare my children. Okay, let's 
let's, if we're going to be the Church of Jesus Christ, let's be authentic followers of Jesus Christ. Let's be very sincere about yeah. this. And, and Grant Palmer even wrote a book to that same effect. The let's, insider's view of Mormon yeah, origins, yeah. Well, when he, when he was talking about how if we're going to be Christians like we profess to be, maybe we should actually pay attention to what Jesus Christ taught. <laughs> and as I focused on that, it just it ruined everything. My Mormonism came crashing down, and 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 you told Emily this. No, because okay. I knew that she was depending on me to be, you know, the straight arrow yeah. Peter priesthood. Yeah, I, I had to be sneaky and conniving and figure out a way to win her. Well, she kind of shared that and said you were very wise. Now that she looks back on it, I, the way I, you did it, I knew it was that very calculated. Out of too. all of my missionary work, this was going to be the. The most important, the yeah. most important convert, and so I realized, rather than present her with all of the evidence and say, "See, it was more of I would present her with it and go, honey, I don't know what to do with this. What can you make of this?" Oh, smart! And I'd go to her for counsel because she's, you know, my better half. Hey, honey, I am struggling with this. What do you think? <laughs> and it was kind of, it was more of, you know, the Socratic method. You just ask questions and. So she let her thinking. come to her own conclusions, and that's what I would do. I would bring her hundreds and hundreds of concerns. Hey, this alarms me. What do you make of this? How do you reconcile this? And I found out this is a wonderful technique to undermine <laughs> Mormonism because all you have to do is point out, here's what Jesus said. Here's what this apostle said. They don't agree. How do you reconcile that? And just stand back and watch the magic happen. <laughs> And gratefully, it did. It, it I mean, works. it's been so wonderful that the two of you have come out together. And, yeah, yeah. Well, so, so you started sharing and inoculating the kids, and you started mm -hmm. learning more and more. And uh, there were some spooky events, spooky times. I was I was reading the Old Testament, and I was trying to explain to the kids about the the, the false gods of the Canaanites. Right. And so, I wanted to show them what the Balim. The, the, the Baal and the Ashtara, what all of that was about. And so I, I Googled some images, and what was alarming is the little statues that they have all over the place in, in Israel, and they're in museums, and I saw thousands of them. Yeah. There, with their hands, they were doing, they were doing tokens from the temple ceremony. <laughs> and that just blew me away. And I, what are these false gods? Doing with those. Doing with the Mormon endowment. That's alarming. And it was just, it was just so many things just kept coming up. And the Bible absolutely crushed my Mormon faith. It just did. And I, the, the, the reality is, uh, I, when I was 10 years old, um, I had an experience where I was just absolutely distraught. I went to my backyard. Um, I wanted to have a Joseph Smith experience. That was my sacred grove. I knew that God and Jesus would both appear to me and, and help me know. You were 10, huh? And, and I believed the story. And I, if it happened to Joseph, it can happen for me. And I went back in my backyard and I prayed so, so hard. And it didn't turn out the way I wanted. God didn't show up. Jesus didn't show up. But I remember feeling a calm and a peace that came over me. And I remember just telling the Lord, whatever happens, I will be... I will be your disciple. Um, later on, I remember arguing with an evangelical pastor about this. And he said, no, if you're born again, if you're really a Christian, then you had an experience when you surrendered to the Lord. And I said, I did. I was 10. I gave my heart to the Lord. And I was a Christian, even though in my Mormon ideology, I was being raised Mormon but I was still a Christian despite my Mormonism. And I think it was when I started to take a serious study of his word, that's when the sanctification process kicked in. So uh. I believe I'm a bit of an anomaly in that I, I truly was devoted to Jesus, God of the Old Testament, Jehovah. Yeah, that's fantastic. And when he called, I recognized the call. And to my horror, it wasn't coming from within the church. It was coming from outside. And, 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 and then it became a, an option of, well, do I pick the church organization? Or do I pick Jesus? Or do I pick my Lord, Jesus Christ? And it's a no-brainer. Peace, I'm out. 
do you think, I mean, I try to say this once in a while, but God, do you think he just sits back and thinks, Eric, yeah, sure. you don't <laughs> even know what you've got planned, what I've got planned for you? I, I don't know, but I know that I'm definitely on the remedial program. I'm yeah. not very sharp, so, well, so yeah. it took 40 years in the wilderness <laughs> to, get me, to get me into a, a position where I can have a healthy relationship with him. And so what's the, what have you gained from all this? What do you feel like you've... I think the takeaway is that God is going to use whatever means he needs to, yeah. to reach into hell, to reach in and extract you out. And that's not to say that Mormonism was hell for me, I, but right. it was certainly <clears throat> taking me in the wrong direction. God... It's apparent to me that God loved me enough to very tenderly, very... It's like you did with Emily. It was like, <laughs> it was like surgery. He yeah. slowly and carefully extracted me out. And that's because he, he's a God of love. He's a God who can do all things. Do you feel a freedom and a liberty? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's, I have this sense of liberation that I can't even explain. But not only that, but then became the sanctification process of... <laughs> Things that I thought were okay are now no longer okay. And my, my mind <coughs> and my heart have been changed to where people at work even said, God, you're not as big of a jerk as you used to be. And I'm like, okay. Did it's I, a weird did compliment. I used to be? <laughs> but I'll take it. And it's just, I, I know that it, it comes down to this. If I could explain it this simply, I was a Mormon who thought I had to earn God's love and approval in order to achieve the celestial kingdom. Yeah. And now I do the things, the works, the good stuff, but I don't do them in order to earn God's approval. I do them because God has already given me his approval and I love God. So that's a little different than that perspective you had as a missionary Absolutely. about Christians. What Absolutely. was it again? You, They were beer drinking? No, we call it the... the, the, the church of free beer free. and pizza because you, you don't have to count calories there's no consequence yeah, you can no con send it out but now i understand and that there's there's nuances there's of christianity and yeah. there's a lot of grace and thank god literally that yeah. there is grace we didn't understand grace as we Mormons, didn't did we no but there is a freedom and a joy and and the christian church that you participate in with emily and yeah. the joy that comes from that and mm -hmm. And I, I love my Christian brothers, and I, I tell them, look, we, we, need to, uh, we need to show, we need to effectively reach these Mormons. We need to pierce yeah. hearts. Oh, thanks, Eric. You're terrific, and I'm so grateful for you and Emily, and appreciate your story. See you next time.